Hi, my name is Roberta. I've been going to Central for 18 years now and today I'm going to share with you my summer devotion. Okay, so my devotion today is about the battle of the mind. I've got my laptop here just to keep me on track in case you wonder what I'm looking at. Um, in this lockdown, one of the hardest things for most of us, including myself, um, has to be like the battle of the mind. It might not be anything extreme, but convincing yourself of some silly things can become so much easier when we're forced to be on our own, like we have been. And during these times when we're facing these battles, it can be really difficult to hear from God and what he has planned for us. I'm going to quickly share a quick story with you um, about what was happening to me prior lockdown. So at the beginning of the year, I had an awful time at work. As a nursery teacher, you have to be registered with different um, councils and things. So we are registered with the Scottish Social Service Council or the SSSC. Long story short, I had two registrations for two different establishments. I left one establishment and when I needed them to cancel the registration, they cancelled the wrong one. Um, which had lots of repercussions for me. It meant I wasn't allowed in the room with the children. I wasn't allowed to be near them, have lunch with them. I wasn't allowed to talk to the parents, nothing. Complete, like, we had to be myself secluded. Um, it felt like as well, my boss had kind of lost a wee bit of trust with me because she was thinking, because you're in control of doing these things yourself, you know, it, it looked bad on my part when it was out with my control. I felt silly, stupid, daft, and I, I was, Ultimately, I felt so, so daft for not anticipating something like this to happen when, how are you meant to, you know? Um, started to get better. I was getting more and more phone calls saying, right, your registration will be ready for this date. And then we found out that East Ayrshire has an, a policy, sorry, um, that if you let your qualification or your registration lapse, you have to be disciplined. So, uh, total panic, because I'm now like, I didn't, but this isn't my fault. Like, I didn't mean to do it. Um, so then again, all these things start coming back to my mind that I feel silly, daft. Um, fortunately, the story does end well. Uh, I was given an apology and allowed to carry on with my job normally because I was able to prove that it wasn't my fault and it was the fault of the Triple SC. Um, so leading up to lockdown, I'd already been off the floor um, or out of the nursery room, if you want. Um, like not being able to be with the kids. So this year, I've had hardly any time with any of my children. Um, so this was a lot to deal with mentally. Um, I felt like a criminal, wasn't allowed in the playroom, and that I was stupid for not anticipating something that's to happen, and that I was completely alone. And I was alone because I literally, I couldn't go in and see my colleagues, couldn't go in and see my parents or my, my um, the kids in my group. So for that four to five week period, it was just mayhem. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of it crying. Um, and just totally not sure what to do with myself. During that time, though, um, I have like a Bible app that sends me, you know, like me notifications of verses every morning. And that one, that day, well, it was two. It was Second uh, Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. Though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So during that, the word stronghold really stuck out to me. Um, I've sang it in church all my life, like the strongholds tumbling down, you know, things like that and heard it in services. Um, but the definition definitely hadn't sunk in. So in general, this term stronghold means a place of security or survival. I think in life, we look at different ways to create security for ourselves. We go to college, university to get these degrees to then secure a great job, um, relationships, qualifications, like all these things. And in the midst of all that, we can forget that security can be found in God himself. A stronghold can also be a personal attitude, um, worry can be a stronghold seeking the approval of others, which was a big thing for me at that time because I was so worried, what's my boss thinking about me? Like, does she think this? Does she think that? Um, anything you can make an idol in your life can be a stronghold. Fear, guilt, resentment, insecurity. Um, all these things can be strongholds in your mind and the Bible has it tells us to tear them down. But how can we tear those strongholds down? 
good question. Here are some ideas. Number one, do not believe everything you think about yourself. These thoughts are not your own and a lot of the time they're the devil trying to get at you. That was something my mum always drilled into me. Like some, the devil is really, really sly and will try and make you think things about yourself that are just not true. Because I was sitting thinking, you're this, you're that, you're stupid. And I wasn't, it was out of my control. To some of you that might be obvious, but in the battle of the mind, learning to block those lies about yourself can give you a real peace and freedom. I know now that, well, I did know then, but I know even more now that God is in control and I can trust him through any situation. Number two, guard your mind from rubbish. Um, so you can do that by reading your Bible, praying, worship, talk with others, be careful and try and recognise what's not good for you. Um, and I know for me as well, I like listening to podcasts on um, just like old church podcasts from camps we used to go to, like Soul Survivor, they've got them all online and I just listen to them and it just reaffirms things for you and reminds you you're not alone. And number three, don't assume because you have gone to church for years that you, can, you can't learn anymore about your faith and relationship with God. God is always trying to teach us no matter how long you have been a Christian. You need to listen for his voice and guidance for direction. So in that situation, my first instinct was to be panic, crying, constant, like, woe is me kind of thing. And I should have been maybe a bit more, right, what's, what's happening here and maybe taking a bit more time to pray about it. But you know, I can't see the forest from the trees most of the time, so I'm a panicked person. Um, it can be hard to train your mind to think differently and to stop yourself um, from this battle in your own mind. So I've got a, a strange analogy, but I think you'll enjoy it. Um, think about a child who has known nothing about, like, and nothing different than wearing a nappy all the time and the parents are trying to show them you know you can you can do something better than this you can use a toilet you don't have to wear a nappy it's more cost effective it's more efficient it's um, a lot more clean um but the child is like but i don't know any other way of life i'm absolutely fine living the way i am the child is trying hard then to use the toilet and be like okay i'll give it a go and then once they've done it successfully the parents are dancing singing rejoicing um some parents are watching you might know um the feeling i know we do at the nursery um and they start to click and see oh this way of life is just so much easier why wasn't i doing this all along and it's like a new connection's made in your mind and i'm sure the child will go on to have accidents and mistakes and oh it needs lots of help but they persevere and that's what we need to do we need to have this mindset of perseverance and trying to end this battle that can be happening in your own mind it's all about looking at life differently and trying to change your mindset so to sum up you're not alone when going through different harsh situations and thoughts in your mind. Lockdown has been very hard on all of us and if it's brought up any issues and hard times it's important to talk about it to others and God. We have to persevere in life and train ourselves to block out what the devil wants us to hear and look towards what God wants us to hear. God shouts at his enemies and whispers to his friends so listen carefully. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life for each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you. You'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever, during your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you.